Bizarre is the only way to describe a recent kidnapping case in Albuquerque. Police say a man forced a woman into his car, drove her around the city for an hour before she finally escaped, and wait until you hear the strange story he told police when they arrested him. And now, funeral scams. Oh, yes. It is hard to believe, but con artists have been taking advantage of grieving families, and we do not want you to be their next victim. Now, those evacuees who did not lose their homes have another concern tonight, going and finding an empty home. Investigators are now looking into possible looting in the fire zone. Bernalillo County's incident commander says there were four people who were acting suspiciously. Bernalillo County officials were in communication with Torrance County officials, telling them to, of course, keep an eye out for these folks. As to whether those four people were arrested, that has not been easy to get confirmed today. And we heard the juror count to see where we were getting this deadlock on both second degree murder charges against both defendants, Keith Sandy and Dominic Perez. Nine voted for not guilty, three voted guilty. We didn't hear a count, though, on the aggravated battery charge against Keith Sandy, so what's up with that? Asha Gregorchik is out there, Eddie, and we're working to get her with our team coverage here, but she's talked to forestry officials who have a concern that people are trying. Trying to get out there and fight this fire on their own. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Let them handle it. Let the crews handle it because this thing is out of control right it's now. It's dangerous. It's the last thing that you want to do. If you bought a ticket through Ticketmaster between late 1999 and early 2013, you could be eligible for free tickets. Qualified Ticketmaster customers got an email with instructions all about how to get vouchers for free tickets to selected events, that is. Now, this is all because of a class action lawsuit over ticket fees and other charges, so check your inbox. It seems like we are telling you about a new carjacking in our city every single day. And this man was in his car waiting in line for the ATM when he noticed a shady character coming right toward him with a gun. So he started to back up, but that's when the bullets started flying. This is a really big deal. There are now more than 700 firefighters on the ground fighting this fire, many of them from 10 different hotshot groups all around the state. Today, the Forest Service declared this a type one firefight, escalating it from type two, so that means even more resources are on the way to fight this. Would you eat mac and cheese coated with Cheetos? Give it a try. Today, Burger King unveiled its newest, cheesiest menu item, Mac and Cheetos. So the burger chain says it's looking to lure in younger customers who are looking for foods that are fun and portable and not so healthy, obviously. Uh, we have learned Governor Susana Martinez will be at that community meeting tonight, and she, we expect, is going to declare a state of emergency so that all state resources can be devoted to fight this thing. You know, that's not surprising at all, considering the scale, the populated area, which it is affecting, the smoke. It's somewhere our state does not want to be, near the bottom of another very important list. And unfortunately, we're back there when it comes to our children's well-being. For the third year in a row, New Mexico ranks 49th overall. We are only in front of Mississippi. The report measures child well-being based on a variety of indicators, including health, education, and the economy. According to Veronica Garcia, the executive director for the nonprofit Voices for Children, New Mexico's standing in the health category improved slightly this year, but the state fell to last place in the poverty and education categories. And there's some chaos happening inside, too. We have video from a KOB viewer of a woman protester uh, being escorted, if that's the <laughs> word you want to say, uh, out of that rally. Older generations often accuse millennials of not having a grip on reality. But tonight, a new study revealed they don't have much of a grip at all, at least according to the Journal of Hand Therapy, that is. Researchers found men younger than 30 have significantly weaker grips than their counterparts did in 1985. Now, the study essentially blames, you probably guessed it, smartphones think texting thumb strength i am no not i am not in that category no no my you have a good grip strength yeah my grandfather oh yeah you do yeah, he yeah. always told me if you want respect yep good strong else, handshake good strong handshake no matter who mm -hmm. if a woman's hand strength stronger than yours you have some you have some, you have some work to do we first showed you the unbelievable footage last night at 10 cell phone and lapel video of grant luna and hidalgo county's district attorney francesca estevez swerving across the highway and then acting in a what some would call bizarre way to silver city police officers but tonight we're hearing 911 calls about what happened for the very first time if you have driven anywhere 
You may have wondered why you didn't buy stock in orange barrels this year, because you see them everywhere in our state, especially in one town where a lot of major roads are all torn up at the same time. As you can imagine, it has drivers pulling their hair out. How safe are the chemicals in the products you buy? Today, President Obama signed a bill championed by our U.S. Senator Tom Udall to overhaul the rules for the first time in 40 years. Now, this new law lets the EPA test thousands of chemicals currently on the market, along with any new ones developed. And it sets new safety standards for dangerous substances like formaldehyde and asbestos. We had mentioned she didn't seem very crushed after this. A lot of times you put your blood, sweat, and tears into a three-week case and you feel like all is lost, but she actually had some hope. And if you have not looked at your 401k or other investments yet, it may not be pretty right now. But some financial experts say the key is not panicking. Tonight, we have proof that sometimes taking on risk can get results. Of course, our city is so divided over plans for a new bus rapid transit line on Central, critics fear it may destroy their businesses and neighborhoods. But Ryan Luby takes us a thousand miles away to a city that's been through this before and shows us how folks there say it paid off. And a new poll that shows presumptive Democratic nominee Hillary Clinton maintaining her lead over her Republican counterpart, Donald Trump. This week's NBC News Survey Monkey poll has Clinton leading Trump by six points, 48% to 42%. And surprise, surprise, more back and forth today between those two candidates. This time it's over campaign funds. We want to show you a picture of what we saw earlier um, a fire, a small fire started there. Uh, there you see it. We learned from our Caleb James, who's down on the ground in that protest there. These are Trump. Shirts, pieces of merchandise that those protesters took from a Trump merchandiser. Albuquerque homeowner says something needs to be done before someone is hurt or even worse, possibly killed. He's really concerned about a dangerous intersection right next to his house. To the four corners now where clean H2O is a no-go for about 6,000 people. Some are under a boil order. Some don't have water at all. And the situation in Farmington is dire on the hottest day of the year so far. One thing we can count on here in New Mexico, people stepping up when they see neighbors in need. And some people in the Farmington area have been without water since Saturday. And before that, they were advised not to use the water without boiling it. Besides having none to drink, those people can't flush their toilets. They can't use their swamp coolers. So folks like Sheila McLaughlin are delivering truckloads of water door to door. And here's the concern. The protesters broke through those metal barriers that you saw there. They broke past the police line. And uh, from what our Caleb James, who is in the middle of all that outside, told us, they started to charge toward the Albuquerque Convention Center. And now police have set up a perimeter, but we don't know what will happen. Chances are when you leave work at night, you didn't get everything done. But you can tackle the unfinished business the next day. It will, of course, be there. What happens, though, when your unfinished business is kids who need help and you believe the system designed to save them is broken? In part two of our series, For Our Kids, a CYFD veteran confided in me. She called it quits nearly two years ago. And what she didn't get done still haunts her. We can only bend so much. Well, there's so many cases and so little services. Before we snap. We're just not making a difference. That's a problem. And I, it's you know, tough for this woman to let those words come out of her mouth. She spent nearly a decade fighting for our kids as both a CYFD investigator and supervisor. She speaks to us disguised afraid the thousands of families she tried to help may recognize her. It wasn't getting any better, to be real honest. The demands of that job, for lack of a better term, it's so bad. Her breaking point came more than a year ago. That's when she snapped and walked away. It's hard work. It's draining work, both physically and emotionally. There's no way to describe it until you actually get in there and do it. You know, you know, you can sit there and tell somebody, you know, you may work 8 to 5 at 4.15, a referral is going to come in, and you're going to have to go out on that. And you may be out all night. Are they going to miss things? Absolutely. When you're working, you know, 12 hours, 16 hour days, you're tired. And sometimes you do miss things. That schedule, or lack of one at times, is just one part of the nightmare. We asked how many cases she typically received during her first stint with CYFD in the 90s. During a work week, 
we would probably get five to six cases. The caseload now? Now they're getting that a day. She says the biggest challenges at CYFD are systemic. Let's say I'm referred for, you know, beating my kid and the social worker shows up and says, you know, I think that you need to uh, get yourself into a parenting class. Okay, thank you, I'll take that. I'll, I'll, you know, consider your recommendation. Well, I don't have to do it. CYFD can't force these parents to do anything. You know, we don't have the teeth to make parents do things before it gets to the point of a legal case. Then there's the Children's Code. The law more than a dozen pages long CYFD workers have to follow. She says at times it works against them, not for them and not for kids, especially when it comes time to suggest a child be removed from the home. If we had the right tools that you could go in and start to make those changes. And at least for this former supervisor, the list of reasons to leave got longer when Monique Jacobson was appointed secretary of CYFD. You know, her background is in marketing. I think her heart's in the right place. But I, I don't know how she could, I don't know that she understands what these workers do on a daily basis. The backlog, their hands being tied, the questionable children's code, all the frustration. But when the phone rings in the middle of the night, she answered. Hundreds of investigators answer. Their job title is caseworker, but the expectation is miracle worker. And what do you do at three in the morning when you have a baby who's just in a diaper, it's freezing cold outside, you've just taken custody, you don't have any foster homes left because everybody's full, and you're just out there with this child and no place to go, what do you do? You stay with that child, you keep that child at the office until you can find a placement, which may not be for, you know, a couple of days sometimes. You're still gonna have child abuse, unfortunately. You're still gonna have crime, unfortunately. But I think that as you, when there's no services available to refer people to, to try to implement change. And again, you, you've got to want to change, and most people don't. Change is hard work, it's scary, it's uncomfortable. Our kids are going to suffer. And that former supervisor isn't the only person who has questioned if Monique Jacobson is qualified to be the secretary of CYFD. At least one state lawmaker has called for her to resign. I recently sat down with Jacobson. I asked her tough questions about her qualifications and whether she's thinking about resigning. You'll hear her answers tomorrow night at 10. So many of our kids are just one encounter away. They're walking that fine line and the next person they meet could set the path for the rest of their lives. So tonight, we are paying it forward to a local man who searches for the kids on that line. A man who for years has given them a fighting chance. The little gym in the South Valley. You know what? There's more miracles come out of that gym than if you had a, a big warehouse gym. Hundreds of miracles, in fact. And Tom Crego has been there to witness every one. He doesn't close the door to anybody. He doesn't care if you come from Yale or jail. It doesn't matter. The door is open. Ray Lopez has kept his gym door open for 10 years. Boxing is in his blood. He was a fighter for years, became an accountant, but missed the sport so much he turned to training. And he knows his stuff. Johnny Tapia and Holly Holm are just two of the greats who have stepped into his ring. But Ray quickly realized he could offer more than great boxing moves. He could offer hope to kids who needed it most. So he built a gym right onto his home. And for 10 years, Ray Lopez has not charged one person one single penny. We've got kids that, that come in and want to fight and make that big money and all this other stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, after a couple of years, maybe they decide they want to go to college or go to school. So it works in a lot of different ways. But there are rules at Ray's South Valley Gym, very important ones. And they have nothing to do with jabs, uppercuts, or hooks. You have to have good marks. Ray keeps it strict trick rule on this good marks. If you come to that gym in trouble, when you're there, no more trouble or no more gym. 
So we decided to go see what Tom was talking about. See those miracles coming out of Ray's 1500 square foot gym and say thank you to the man who has fought for all our kids. So the gym is right onto his house, correct? We're not expecting who's gonna come next and then you just take over. Hi. Okay, I can do that. Hi, is Ray here? Yeah. Where's Ray? Hi. <laughs> hey, Pops. You know, you do, did an awful lot for your community, and you do an awful lot for people, and you did an awful lot for me, my friend. And you're what it's all about here in the South Valley. You know, as all the kids that you help, KOB has asked me to pay it forward to you. So if you want to put your hand out, I got some new Benjamins for you, brother. <laughs> There's uno, do, oh, we're, oh yeah, one, two, three, four. Wow. And have fun. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <Bob's. laughs> What's it like when each new kid comes through that door well, for the I first love, time? I love it. Because each time it. a kid then, comes through that door, and stuff and, chances are and their parents they're on that fine line. Oh, I know where they'd be. I mean, there's no doubt. You read about it every day in the paper, and you also see about it on KOB Channel 4. Uh, you know, some of these kids just wind up in, in trouble. But lucky for them, that next encounter was with a man who will always be in their corner. It's for the kids. It's all about the kids. It's not about me. It's not about the training staff. It's, it's about the kids to make sure that they succeed in life. And that's what we want. Love it. Yeah. So what if there's a parent watching who has a kid walking that fine line we talked about? How do they get in touch with Ray if they're interested? We have made it so simple because we figured there would be parents yeah. who want to get in touch with Ray. Uh, we have his email address and his phone number at KOB.com. You just need to click on this story. And that's also where you can find out how you would like to nominate someone just like Ray for Pay It Forward.